I was a huge wrestling fan as a kid. I was so immersed that like whatever I was getting on TV wasn't enough, so I'd get Pro Wrestling Illustrated, would get old VHS tapes of old matches and things, and saw the Sportatorium for the first time and saw the brothers wrestling, you know, and I really remember seeing Kevin jumping off the top rope in bare feet. I just wrestled barefoot with my brothers in the ring, but we wanted to make a wrestling show that was faster, a quick pace and, and all that, and it's great TV, and that's, that, that's what we were looking for. I just love their style. I remember the day that I found out that Carrie had died. Yeah, it really hit me. I'd seen him live a couple of times and I had known the other brothers had died and the pain of that and this series of losses that they suffered, it stayed with me and I thought about them. When I first had the idea, I was thinking, if you could travel anywhere in time, where would it be? I'm like, oh, Sportatorium, 1983. There's a lot of nonsense in the, in the wrestling world. There's a lot of myth. And so once I found those like, reliable sources, we were able to actually build facts about what happened and kind of use that to find the story and, and base the film around. I had decided not to reach out to the family until I was in prep and I knew the movie that I was really gonna make. In our first phone conversation with Kevin, he said, Sean, there's one thing uh, I wanna make sure of, and that is that you show how much my brothers and I loved each other. And I was able to say that's what the movie is. That's what it's about. I trusted him after that because he told me it was a labor of love. He had watched us in England as a young boy. And so I, I felt good about it and so I, I I told him I'd help him any way I could. I work really hard on the script, load the script with as much information as the actor needs in a lot of ways. I think in this scenario where you're playing real people, there's a fine line of like how much do you focus on the real person versus the, the character on the page because no character in a movie is ever going to fully encapsulate the real person and it, the focus becomes about the movie and the character. Find the character, find your version of the character and settle into that. And that's, I think, how you find the, the, the best performance. And so each of them did that. The physical was really left to them. They knew the character and I said, I'm casting you because you're the right actor for the role. I'm not casting you because of what you look like. Zach, Jeremy and Harris and Stanley as well, and Holt, all took their own approach, and that was it, I just let them do that. Preparing to play Kevin was one of the most challenging things I've ever done physically, and I started one of the most rigorous like training and diet programs that I've ever been on in my entire life. It was very tough. Ultimately, it was a really big insight for me into who Kevin was. Just the dedication that he was willing to put into his physicality and into wrestling. I've always heard how they really get into their character, but the way they do is so much deeper than I thought. He knew everything about me. And it would take a guy with talent to, to play me. If anyone can do it, it's him. There was no convincing necessary. I think Sean was like, do you want to do this thing? And I said, absolutely. So I did everything I could. I mean, I ate a lot more, lifted a lot. The intensity that the character of Kerry needed, the journey that he goes on, both like his intensity as an athlete, struggles with depression, and having that charisma. And I think Jeremy has all of those things and those abilities. What I worked on with Sean was Kerry's relationship with his brothers, with their father. Even though they were at times getting sort of like pinned against one another um, by their father, that there is this support and true love between the brothers. I want you to join your brothers in the ring. Yes, sir. I love that. Thank you. Did you train a little, brother? Woo! The one thing about okay. David was David had the stature. David was the tallest of the brothers, but he also was the sort of most natural wrestler. And so Harris has that immediate ease that David had. I knew I needed to try and like physically resemble him to some degree, but David was very comfortable in his skin. A lot of people spoke about him being very, very calm and very naturally able within the ring. So the biggest thing for me was learning to wrestle, and that for me was the starting point. Every time I make a movie, I want to give someone a shot. And so for the role of Mike, I really wanted an unknown, and Stanley Simon was amazing. He did tell me that 
the character of Mike is is somewhat of an amalgamation of their other brother. There was another uh, Von Eric called Chris Von Eric. You need to start hitting the waist more, kid. Mike's weight kind of fluctuated a lot throughout his life, I feel like, because after he came out of his coma, he like lost like 50 pounds. So it was figuring out what weight to be at kind of thing, because yeah, at one point, I think he was at like, you know, 225, and at the start of the film, he's a young kid. Now we all know, Carrie's my favorite, then Kev, then David, then Mike, but the rankings can always change. I had been writing this script for seven years. I had seen Holt McCallany in Mindhunter, I think the first episode I watched that, I was like, oh, wow, he's, he's it. Fritz von Erich, he had his admirers, and there are a lot of people out there that were not fans. I am a fan. He had his tragic flaws. One of them was his obsession with making the WCCW, the World Class Championship Wrestling Promotion, as big as it could be at any cost. Another one was his obsession with the NWA World Heavyweight Championship belt, which he had never won, which he desperately wanted one of his sons to win. Fritz seeks camaraderie from his sons, but I think he's operating with what he believes is the best intentions. He says, if you're the toughest. He said, if we were the toughest, the strongest, the toughest, the most strongest, successful, the, most successful, the, the absolute, absolute best, nothing had ever hurt us. It's tough love. Just had a sense from him that he would fully understand Fritz and the complexities of Fritz. Man. Dad's too tough on Mike, Ma. You gotta say something. Please. Kevin, that's between them. There's usually like a set of rules in a house, and in this house, in the film, there is a set of rules, which is the father governs the boys, he makes them tough. Miss Moore did such a good job, I thought, as, as playing her, because like all the others, she put her heart into it, but she, she did, appeared like she was resentful. It made me realize how strong my mother was, because I didn't ever see her as resentful. But God bless her heart, she was so good. You keep a hold of her, son. She's a good one. You put that down, someone else will pick it up. Yes, sir. Kevin and Pam, I actually didn't know anything about the privacy of their relationship. So it is fiction within the story. Hi, Kevin. Can I get your autograph? In the movie, it kind of looks like uh, she pursued Kevin Runner more. But truth be known, she did not pursue me. I pursued her. I play Pam from when she meets Kevin through to their marriage and through to them having a family of their own. So she sort of cuts through inherited kind of toxic masculinity and this idea of repressing your feelings and holding it all in. And she kind of rebalances him and sort of makes him think about what he really wants. Jen just approached the wrestling costume world with a level of respect and craft and the functionality of all of it too, right? Like they have to look a certain way, but they also have to actually wrestle in it. So collaborating with Sean was super fun. First of all, because it's the Von Erichs, we had a wealth of information for research. For research, not only did we use YouTube, Google, but there is this amazing photo album that's published from the Von Erichs family album. And this is what I call my Bible. When I went over with Sean, like how I presented Kevin, more of the grounded animal and kind of like the more quiet, because then when you get to David's character, he's got, you know, the midnight cowboy jacket on and he wears it with a football jersey and a cowboy hat that has a much taller crown than they make nowadays. And here, as you can see, Carrie's palette is much more poppy and much more 80s. The wardrobe and the hair and stuff, at least in my case, did a lot of the work for me and just like finding the comfort in that in that space. And there's like a partnership, you know, we're, we're wearing these very skimpy kind of clothes all the time, but at least Harris, Zach and I are, um, we're in it together. There's a, there's a brotherhood in our skimpy clothes. At first glance, every individual piece just felt ridiculous. Like the wigs did not look right at the beginning. Um, but as we got closer to filming and kind of tinkered with them and applied, you know, different cuts, bruises, makeup, and paired that with the wardrobe, it started to make me feel like I was from Texas. I think it helped. Putting the boots on that were made for David and the wig, and Jen has done a beautiful job at bringing these characters to life. And Natalie, our hair designer, and Elle, our, our makeup designer, they all collectively have just fleshed them out. 
Oh, and then we have Fritz and Doris. Fritz is obviously is a little bit for us backdated. He's definitely more stuck in the 70s, maybe even early 70s in his silhouette. Holt is very fit. He was remaining fit for his 1960s scene. She proposed the idea of me being in great shape in the beginning of the film and then wearing a prosthetic belly to show Fritz in the 70s and 80s when he had put on a lot of weight. And he's a shadow of his former self by the end of the movie. And Doris, she's constantly cooking, cleaning, picking up after them. But when you really looked at a lot of pictures of Doris, she's mainly in pants. She's not like the typical housewife. And I thought that was super cool. And I think their most iconic look that we definitely wanted to introduce in scene 62 for us was when they entered the ring. We wanted to make sure they looked head to toe like this. Freebirds, you've made this about Georgia versus Texas, and it isn't. It's about filth versus decency, and you know it. And here's our iconic robe for Kevin. But I do have to say one of my favorite pieces, because it has so much detail, is David's jacket. Another iconic robe that we wanted to recreate was when Kerry Von Erich wore the In Memory of David robe. I am the world's heavyweight champion because I am the greatest wrestler alive today. This is Ric Flair's robe the most outrageous robes that there is for a wrestler. And this was a great example of collaborating with Sean because he was like, you can tell me which robe you're going to pick. And a wrestler wearing, you know, good and plenty pink with feathers and bedazzled and completely sequenced and rhinestoned and his nickname is Nature Boy was the most amazing thing to pick. I absolutely love this movie, love the costumes, wanted to work on this movie so bad because I just think it's such a turn of a time and such a specific look and vibe to capture that uh, it's, it's completely special and onto itself. One of the big things that drew me to this was being able to recreate the Sportatorium. A historic wrestling venue, but was basically like a tin shed. Kevin says that some nights he couldn't even see through the rain because there's so much cigarette smoke. And so James Price, my designer, said, he's like, the Sportatorium has to feel like spit and sawdust. We did a bit of a pilgrimage to kind of get the feel. So we went to Dallas and stood on the site of where the Sportatorium was. We went to Denton to see where the family ranch was. And we'll start from there, really. I felt a bit of a responsibility towards Kevin to kind of do justice to the essence, especially the sportatorium here, which is the most tricky thing to do. It felt very much like it was inside a, a warehouse, so we've been able to build a composite set here. But this was a furniture store, so there were different rooms here, there were furniture in here, and we've had to clear all of that out. And then before we could even start building, the biggest part of the job was to remove all the walls. I think it was four weeks from starting the demolition, and the demolition took nearly three weeks. So it was just over a week we took to build all of this. The other challenge was that we had to have some other arenas that, that resting took place in. And we found um, at LSU University, this place called the Ag Center. And so it had a great feel, it had a great scale to it, held about 10,000 people. We just did simple stuff like looked a different way at the ceiling, so it felt like two different places. So the ranch, the family house, was quite tricky to find actually because they obviously had a reasonably big ranch but we ended up going for something that was slightly more modest. It really is about family, brotherhood and, and the house was kind of important that it became a character in itself. We work really hard to just make sure those environments are lived in and, and same with Matthew Chardet and my DP like it has to be truthful, it has to be real. And sometimes you don't know it until you're seeing it and you're doing it and you're making those tweaks on the day. But it's just about finding the location and the place and the texture that makes it feel real. I walked into the Von Erich Ranch and I was like going back in time. It was incredible, so evocative. When you're in a set like that, you just don't really have to do any acting anymore. And it was amazing because it really was a ranch, so there was no set. So you could really kind of inhabit the space and own the space. And it really felt like a family home, a really loved family home. So our wrestling trainer was Travel Guerrero Jr. He trains actors for a lot of film and TV uh, to wrestle on screen. Um, but he's a very famous wrestler, wrestled in the WWE for years. Uh, and also comes from a very similar Texas wrestling family. The Guerreros are very famous. Sure, I was a pro wrestler for a long time and have been a stunt coordinator 
but they don't mesh really well. So when I train a pro wrestler to do something, it doesn't translate to what I'm doing on film. When I train an actor to do something on camera and a scene, it doesn't translate to pro wrestling. I was so lucky on this film to have Jeremy Allen White and Zac Efron and Harris Dickinson and Stanley Simmons. They all brought it every single day. They wanted to learn. So every time we were in the ring, they, they were st studying and they were just students of the game and they really wanted to give honor to the characters that they were playing. First, he kind of taught us about wrestling and the lingo of it and the dance of it all. And it's largely improvisational and sometimes it's called rehearsed or pre-planned. After learning about it and learning the lingo and how to take bumps or hits, falls onto the mat, punches, things like that. Then we started to just practice and apply. I kind of came ready to, I was like, well, let me just watch these guys do the thing and I'll just sort of mimic it. But you really need to learn the basics. I mean, I feel like in the beginning, it was just falling, like oh. hitting the mat over and over and over again. And after you hit your head on it a few times, you start to realize that spot's not good to land on and you kind of grow and evolve. And Chava was there the whole way just to make sure that we looked authentic. How do we sell this punch without really clocking this guy in the face? Finally, when we were in prep, got together and did like a sort of wrestling boot camp where we had all the guys together for a couple weeks, um, ran through the matches, the choreography, we found these great uh, local wrestlers out of New Orleans who, were, who played the other roles. They came up and we just had this two-week wrestling camp. It was, it was really fun. We just kind of got into it and it was, a, it was a good starting point for brothers, I think. Mm. Yeah, we had about two weeks of, of training and wrestling, I think, yeah. before we started filming, which was, which was really nice. But really, within a few weeks, Chava had them wrestling full matches and, you know, for Zach, I'm really focusing on the sort of high-flying stuff because Kevin's signature move was a flying crossbody off the top rope. Now, I know that David's signature move is like the iron claw, but it's always fun clotheslining someone. Clotheslining a 300-pound man, probably something I'll never get to do again. Carries the Texas Tornado. He does a spinning punch. It's like a combination of a punch and a discus throw. Which actually, that was a really difficult one to get because you want to be looking where the punch is landing as to not hurt somebody. What I took too quickly and what I really enjoy are the drop kicks. Those just like look really impressive. One of the things that was fascinating for me was doing the moves with the guys that were teaching us wrestling. These guys were pro professional wrestlers. Yeah. And mm. the, you'd feel like a king after walking out and throwing yeah. a punch and they'd sell it. Believe it or not, all the wrestling you see in this movie is done by our actors. Any close-ups, any time they were in the ring, was them doing the moves. The drop kick was always quite scary. I had not probably tried it. And he was like, you'll be good, man. I was like, I think I need to like give it a go first. But it's because you have to really like jump high and commit to that. To the fall. To the fall. Yeah. It was a lot. And we had to do a lot of takes of these sequences. And, and so much of the movie is in tiny little bits. But there was 10 minutes on the front end and six minutes in the back of most of what you see. And we were, we were really doing it. What Sean wanted to see and what Matias, our DP, wanted to see was a long match. We had you know, 10, 12 minute matches over and over and over and over again. We probably did it you know, 15 times. So I mean, it's taxing on you for sure, but they wanted to capture the feeling of what, a, what an actual 10, 15 minute match feels like. The crowd was incredible. local Baton Rouge crowd that came out, hundreds of people. It gets very organic very fast, and I was telling the actors, I go, guys, as soon as you get in there, they're gonna be cheering, but as soon as you start doing moves, they're really gonna be reacting. And there was times when we weren't even rolling, and they're, they're yelling, the people are going crazy, and we're like, we're not even rolling yet. The very first day we shot wrestling, Chava played the Sheik, and there was someone playing Skandor Akbar, who was a very famous villain from WCCW and they just were walking to the ring so we could set up, and the crowd got on their feet and started booing them. And it was incredible, and that's when I knew like, we were gonna use these guys. It felt like real, real matches. It felt like a real event. Yeah, oh God, the funniest thing. So climbing to the top rope and jumping off, yeah. it's, it's not that hard. You gotta balance on the rope, but you gotta really commit to that jump. And I jumped up, and I remember just being so high over the ring. 
yeah. and I like froze in midair. I remember I hit Chavo super hard and I look up kind of in a daze and I see this guy who is an extra. He stands up and goes, whoo, now you're flying, boy. <laughs> and I was like, all right, the crowd like erupted. Those guys, that it energy was, they kept up was actually amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So a lot of the wrestling characters that were the actual wrestlers from the Sportatorium from WCCW, we portrayed in the film. Gina Hernandez and Bruiser Brody, who are two iconic wrestlers from WCCW. A Harley Race, and then there's a moment in 1983. We feature on the TV in Fritz's office where Ric Flair defeats Harley Race, and we also feature Bill Mercer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to an exciting night of world-class championship wrestling on ESPN. Who is the face and the voice of WCCW, and also legendary Dallas sports commentator. We have an amazing wrestling cameo from Ross and Marshall Von Erich, who are Kevin's sons. So you see them in the ring, which was really amazing to be able to bring them into the into the movie and into the process. We did a little scene here and it, it went great. This, it's hard not to be in awe with the, the whole aspect of the, we're in a sportatorium right now. So this is pretty crazy. Yeah, and the scene, it's it's kind of panning past us and going into Zach. And I think there's another scene where earlier, my grandpa is in the same position looking down on and seeing his sons down there. And so I'm getting chills talking about it, but. It was pretty know. unreal looking up there, and it looks like my dad's silhouette. Seeing like, it's the classic Kevin Von Erich haircut, so it's, <laughs> seeing it from there, it's hard to miss. It was really emotional um, watching from behind <clears throat> the scenes and listening, because Zach looks so much like Uncle Kevin up there. Yeah. And I, I think about Uncle Kevin now, yeah. and, and how incredible that is for him to, to be able to see his brothers yeah. through you guys. Yeah. The challengers from Denton, Texas, Kevin, Kerry and David Von Erich. The Freebirds, the Freebirds and the Von Erichs had this huge rivalry back in the day and we were able to get three wrestlers that played actors. They were exactly like the Freebirds. It was really cool to see the Von Erichs and Freebirds again. And we were able to get one of the original WCCW referees, James Beard, to be a referee in the film. And from his mouth, he goes, Chavo, he goes, I remember this. The Sportatorium looks the same. These wrestlers look the same. The Von Erichs are doing the same. He goes, he was getting chills just watching it. He's like, I forgot to be a referee because I was being a fan. Tie up, headlock, tackle, right back to headlock, cut him off. Tag in Michael, then we go, then we're back. That's good, that's good, cool. let's do okay. that. It's total mayhem. Gordy kicks out and Hayes elbows his own man. Terry moving out of the way just in time. All hell has broken loose. Kevin tossing Michael Hayes through the ropes. Zach, Harris, and Jeremy became the Von Erich brothers. They really did. And they this team that felt like they'd been doing it forever. This natural ability that they had, along with my wrestlers in the ring, the Freebirds, it was, it was magic when we saw it. All of these guys are so tight on set. Zach, Harris, Jeremy, Stanley, Holt, they just had this really beautiful thing. And they really felt like a family. When you have to learn a lot at once, I think it's, it, it doesn't work unless you trust each other. Also, the brothers in real life, they like train together like rigorously, right? Big part of the story was these guys pushed each other. And that's why they were so dynamic in the ring, is they were each other's biggest competition, as well as being just the best of friends. That's kind of how we met. We met in the ring, throwing punches, trying to pull them. What a special moment for them. The winner and new NWA World Six Man Tag Team Champions, Kevin Perry and David Vaughn. Sean's big mandate to me about the belts was they need to look real. And uh, I spent probably five weeks trying to get all the, the proper championship belts. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there, but there's a lot of stuff that's reproduced and it's cheap looking and it's fake looking. And each time one comes in, I come to Sean's office. I got something for you, man. And he just light up. It's fine, Mike, you're doing fine. Just keep going, circle up. 
Mike, he was a great wrestler, but compared to his brothers, he was kind of pushed into the ring. Yeah, he was definitely influenced heavily by his father after his brother David died. I'm only in one scene doing the wrestling, so in my scene I'm kind of still learning the ropes. But he also was really young and then he got injured young as well and that definitely affected him. I don't think it was ever the same after that big injury that he had. Hey, how's the music coming, Michael? Mm. Hey, what do you play? Lots of things. Um, viola, violin, piano, some other instruments. Musical like his father. So there's this element in the real Von Erich story about Fritz being a musician that I was really drawn to because I think he chose not to be a musician, but I think the kids had musical interests. And I wanted to explore this interest and gave it to Mike and not quite fitting in his family who are athletes. So I did have to do like a, a music scene and uh, that was, I don't know, I was freaking out about that. But uh, you know, we just did that actually like two days ago. I we had an original song written, and Stanley learned it. And Stanley plays in a band with his brother, so he, he's, he plays guitar. And I've, I know the guitar, I've been playing the guitar, but it's more like the singing, like I don't, I don't know, like I, I'm kind of like a baritone, and I usually sing like back up to people, and um, never like the leading man kind of thing, so. It was exciting. Yeah, hopefully it turns out good. <laughs> Brotherhood and survival is just such a beautiful thing I wanted to explore. And in that brotherhood, there is the love and the fun and the energy that they have together. And they're just electric together. Look at my beautiful brothers. Oh my. My brothers and I were so close. It was a great childhood. What fun we had. They went through a lot together. And they, were, they weren't just like a set of brothers. They really were like so close. My dad, to this day, if he, like, he didn't want to talk too much about any of his brothers could get choked up. I want to be with my family. You know, be with my brothers. Mm, that's sweet. Kevin genuinely loves his brothers, loves his family, loves being around them. And in the scene with Pam at the diner, he says, you know, we can have our ranch, my whole family can come live with us. We could be one of those modern super couples. <laughs> we could have our own ranch. Everyone could come live with us, all my brothers, their families. Okay in the movie and in life, that sort of warmth and wanting the whole family to be together is true to him. And so in real life, <laughs> did move to a ranch and you know, his four kids and 13 grandkids all came and lived with him. He's the most joyful man I've ever met. He really is, walks around with a smile that's plastered on his face, playing with our, the, all the grandchildren he has. And he's like, look at me, I'm a blessed man. I started off with, with five and what, what I thought was bad that got taken away from me. It's like, God's doubled my numbers. I have 20 grandchildren. <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's like extremely at peace. People that might see me at first glance think that I've been through a lot of tragedy, but not really. I mean, that's one way of looking at it, but I hope this movie has a message like Life is worth it. Fight for it. I really hope that the movie calls attention to the Von Erichs and the film is so celebratory of them at their height. And I hope it brings a modern audience back to them and realizing how influential they were in the sport and just how incredible uh, their energy is and how exciting they were. I hope people are drawn to that.